promised a lady called Karen tonight that I would use my big trimmer to cut out um, the, the stuff that we needed tonight. So it's a bit unwieldy because it's big uh, just to lug about, um, but it's the most brilliant trimmer, you know, in, in uh, paper cutter that I've, I've come across. It's amazing. It's just, it's not, you know, it's not one that you kind of want to lug about everywhere. So um, I'm going to be using that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out um, all of the bits at the beginning that we need. But first of all, what I want you to do is I want I want to direct you to the um, tutorial. And in the tutorial, there is this page, which is page number eight, where I've actually drawn out an example of how I've put my book together. So uh, as you can see, um, if it's unrolled, I'm not going to get this all in shot, but you'll get you'll get a rough idea that this this page here, that's the one with the corner uh, pocket sliced off. This one, that's the one with um, the acetate front and the uh, photo mats in there. Number three is this one here that opens up. We had, I think we had a name for this at one point. Didn't we call it a flippy flappy pocket or something? I don't know. Uh, there's that one. And then um, we've got our sort of half page pocket here just a very simple ordinary pocket that we're used to number five is um that half page pocket there and then number six is um the belly band page and that's all that side but of course when we turn it over we've got this one which is the one under here so i've got i think this is out of shot now um i've got this pocket that corner pocket there the reason i'm telling you all of this is because this book you can totally mix and match you don't have to do it in the order that i've done it it won't make the slightest bit of difference to your book at all positive attitude goldstone creates a positive attitude i'm all for that good for vitality definitely need that one um so like I said, the book itself, you can choose to put whatever element wherever you like. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take each element separately tonight and I'm going to show you how to put them together. But where you put it in your book and how you put it in your book and how often you put it in your book is entirely up to you. It doesn't matter. They're all very, very, very interchangeable. OK, so um, what we're going to start with is we're going to have a look at um, cutting out. So um, you're going to want your base card and you are going to want your trimmer. So here's my mega trimmer. This was a Christmas present from my lovely husband. Hello. Uh, and I absolutely adore it. I've always been um, a Fiskars fan. Um, but I just love this trimmer because it's got a rotary blade on it by the way i'm not being paid for this this was a present to, although i have been on the fiskars design team this is me just waxing lyrical about a product that i love um because i know we, we were talking about it in another group and um i said that i'd got one of these uh i just didn't use it on camera because it's big anyway uh it's got a rotary cutter on it which means that i don't have to keep replacing the blades which is huge so we're going to start off with the corner pocket, OK, which is, hold on, I've got no space here, as usual, which is this one here, OK? And we're going to cut that out. We're going to, I'm only going to cut one, even though I've got two on the book, because I'm only going to show you how, how one of each works. Uh, and I'm going to cut that at five and a half by five and a half inches. OK, and I'm just going to put that to one side because I'm going to come back later on um, to, to actually go through it and, and make it into the pocket that we need. I just want to cut everything out first. So the corner pocket is five and a half by five and a half inches. The policy envelope, which is this one here, you can have it with or without the acetate front. This one has got the acetate front, but that one hasn't it's just uh it's just the policy envelope with the um the photo mats inside you can do it either way okay so we're going to cut out uh one of those and we want to cut 
um, our pocket at six by six and a half inches. So I just need to make sure that fits. So it's going to be six by six and a half inches. And that's the actual front of the cat hairs. That's the actual front of the pocket. Um, and then the flap on the top, um, that is cut at two and a half by five and a half inches. So the flap is cut at two and a half by five and a half inches. Okay, so that's quite a small piece. Oh, by Mel. Okay, so that's what you need for one policy envelope. Okay. Right. Now, this one, this one we were calling the flip flap pocket for want of a better description. If anybody can come up with anything better, that would be brill. To make that, we want to cut four pieces and we want to cut two at seven by four inches. So I'm just going to cut that at seven by four inches and we want two of those so that's two at seven by four and then we want to cut two more at five and a quarter by two and a half inches So that is five and a quarter by two and a half inches. So they're quite small. Okay, so that's what we need cutting for our flip flap pocket okay now the large pocket is just this one here it's just half the page okay so a very very simple pocket we've made loads of them before but we'll go through it again um for one pocket you need to cut a piece that is six and a half by four inches so six and a half by four inches Okay. Now the long side pocket. Hi Enfis. Which is this one here, this long that's the long side pocket. Okay. I want you to cut that at 8 by 3 and a half inches so I'm going to cut that at three and a half by eight inches okay then I think finally hold on I'm making the right pigs here with this I've got paper everywhere and I've lost all of my photo mats um, the last bit is our belly band, which is this bit here. That's that bit that goes down there. And I want you to cut that at two by eight inches. Okay, so cut that at two. By eight inches. Right, and for now, that's all we're going to need the trimmer for. We will need the trimmer again in a little bit when we come to do the slanted bits on the pockets. However, I'm going to use my smaller trimmer for that, just for ease of use. This one just folds up nice and compact, and I can just put that away. Right, so we're going to go backwards now. 
Now I want you to get your scoreboard. And first of all, we are going to go back to the belly band, which we cut at eight by two inches. And we're going to put it on our scoreboard and we're going to uh, we're going to score on the eight inch side, which means that we're going to um, put our piece with the eight inches at the top. OK, and we are going to score at half an inch and at seven and a half inches. OK, so we've got our belly band with two parallel score marks one at either end okay so let me just get rid of this thing that's just come up on my screen otherwise if you ask me a question i'm not going to see it okay right now we've got the long uh, side pocket we're going to start off by scoring on the eight inch side is it eight inches yeah, yeah. and we're going to score at half an inch and we are going to score at seven and a half inches on the eight inch side. And that means that the eight inches goes to the top of our scoreboard. We are then going to turn it 90 degrees. So we're going to be scoring on the three and a half inch side. And we are going to score at half an inch. So what we've got now is a long pocket with three intersecting score lines. OK, this isn't rocket science. We've done this many, many times before. Now we've got the large pocket, which essentially is exactly the same as the long pocket. It's just on the side. So um, this one measures six and a half by four inches. We're going to start off by um, scoring on the six and a half inch side at half an inch. And at six inches, we're going to turn it 90 degrees. So we're now scoring on the four inch side. And we're going to score at half an inch. I know I'm going too quickly, by the way. I'm sure this is just confusing because it's confusing me as well. It could be easier once we've uh, scored what we need to score, I think. So now we are down to the flippy flappy pages or whatever it was that we called it. And we've got these four pieces here. I want you to take the smaller pieces, the two of them that are two and a half by five and a half inches and I want you to score hi Louise I want you to score on the two and a half inch side at half an inch on both of those pieces and I want you to take the two larger pieces that are four by seven inches and we're going to score on the four inch side at half an inch. And that is the same on both. Nearly there. We've only got the one piece still to do. So what we've got left is our policy envelope. We've got the, um, the flap of our policy envelope, which measures three and a half by five and a half inches. And we're going to score on the two and a half inch side at half an inch. And then our last, is this our last piece? Yeah. No, not quite. We've got this last piece, which is six by six and a half inches. And we are going to score on the six inch side at half an inch. We're going to whop it round um, 90 degrees. So we are now scoring on the six and a half inch side, which means the six and a half inch side is at the top of our scoreboard. And we are going to score at half an inch and we are going to score at six inches okay now our last piece is this uh, corner slant pocket which is five and a half inches square piece of card we're going to just score on two sides at half an inch so that the two score lines intersect okay dead easy and that's done. Right, now you need a pencil and you need a ruler and I'm going to get my mat out, which is filthy, whichever way around I have it. Right, so I need my ruler, which I know I had earlier. Yep, and my pencil, 
which, well, goodness me, that could be anywhere really. You know what, I'm going to do mine in pen, it doesn't matter because um, it's only for a, the pretend book if you like and it'll probably be easier if you see what I'm doing. So, we're going to start off with the corner slant pocket, which is this one here, okay? And we're just going to be able to slot in um, our photo mats in there but this ends open but that in these two bits are what we're actually going to stick down okay so what I want you to do is I want you to first of all I want to mitre this corner so I've just put my scissors down somewhere safe and I can't find those now oh for goodness sake here we go right so um where the score lines intersect, you can see that we've got that little um, square box. So what I want you to do is I want you to snip from the edge of the card up to where those two score lines intersect, where that, where that square is. And then I want you to just take your scissors and just take the angle um, slightly uh, differently for that. This doesn't have to be straight. I find it's better if it's not straight, okay? So I've cut off that score, where those two score lines intersect, I've cut that away, okay? Now, the next bit, bear in mind, well, actually it doesn't matter so much for this next bit, but what you're going to have to think about in a moment is which way you want your pocket to go. So, for instance, in my book, on the inside pocket, the um, slant faces that way and then on that one it faces the opposite way can you see that will depend which way you want to fold your flaps I know all about you know um, valley and mountain folds and stuff but I tend to ignore those at the best of times but this time it's actually going to matter which way round you fold your flaps but before you do that we need to cut this bit off here and I'll show you how to do that so I want you to take your ruler and I want you to take your pencil or your pen and I want you to measure, you can do this one of two ways, you can either measure in two and a half inches from the very edge of the paper or you can measure in two and a half inches, uh, you can measure in two inches from the score line, it's entirely up to you. So um, I'm going to go in two and a half inches from the edge. Uh, of my card so I'm going to measure two and a half inches and I'm going to put just a little mark I'm doing mine in pen so you can see it from there I'm going to just turn this round and I'm going to do exactly the same on this side I am going to measure two and a half inches in from the edge of my card and I'm going to make a mark so what I've got now is I've got my pocket which is five and a half inches square I've got my half inch score, score lines and we've mitered that corner and then from this top edge here I have taken in two and a half inches from above um, that, that, you know, where the score line is so I've taken in on that, that side two and a half inches and I've made a mark and I've taken in two and a half inches from that side and I've made a mark. To be honest with you, it's not vital. It doesn't matter. It's entirely up to you. It depends what sort of angle you want um, on, your, uh, on your pocket. But I just do it this way because it suits me and it's easy. So what you need to do now is get your trimmer out. So here's my other trimmer. And I particularly like this one because there's, I don't know if you can see it, but there's actually a wire that goes right down the middle um, here so that I can always see exactly where my blade is going to cut. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at my trimmer and I'm going to line up those two marks that I've made where I know it's going to cut. So I've got this line right down the middle of my trimmer here where I can line up my two marks. But when I lay down um, the, the blade guide, I can see because of that wire, which I'm hoping that you can see, 
that is exactly where my blade is going to cut and my blade is going to cut off this piece of card here that is between those two marks that we've just made okay so I'm just going to use my trimmer and I'm going to cut that away so what I've got now is I've got uh, my my pocket now I'm going to turn this over because that's where I had um, my marks if you're using pencil you shouldn't be able to see it but now I'm going to fold in on the score line and I have my pocket so uh, goodness knows where I've put my bone folder I haven't even seen that today could be anywhere oops no absolutely no idea where that is hmm I'll just use an ordinary one. Don't worry, I'll use this one, darling. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to burnish those flaps there where the score lines intersect. And there is my um, pocket. So what I'm going to do now are you guys still with me because this is my my uh, computer seems to have crashed as far as I can see or are you still there because somebody tell me I'm presuming if you don't reply it's because this is all well, gone horribly I've, wrong I've got no more comments oh you can still see Terry okay that's good Excellent. It's all right. It's just mine's mine's playing silly today. Oh, brilliant. Okay, that's great. Thanks, Carol. Much appreciated. It's all right. I I can't. My my screen's just gone dead, but that's fine. So um, I've got my corner pocket here, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually attach it to my book. Um, so that's going to go on there. I'm just going to put some glue on my flaps here. And I left my glue today without the lid on, so whether any glue comes out is questionable. And I'm just going to put that pocket down on top of that. But remember, these can go anywhere in your book. It fits on any page. My original, original book um, that I did for the retreat, I actually put um, this pocket on the front of my book. On the book here that I've done, I actually, um, I've used my pattern paper to make a little pocket, but I'll go over that with you all later. Okay, so that's now got my pocket in my book. Now, what you're going to say to me is, when I'm decorating this, how do I know how to cut it? So, I'm going to do this one step at a time. That pocket measures approximately approximately five inches square so I'm going to show you how I decorate that when I put in um, this back piece here I tend to measure that that area that I'm going to um, decorate and I cut out the whole thing I might cut some of it off it depends what it's got on it and whether I want to use it and then I'll just slip that that piece in but this there's a little a little I don't even know if it's the best way to do it it's just the way that I do it so I'm just going to grab a piece of pattern paper and I don't really think it matters what I use. Let's go for lime green. And I'm going to cut out a piece that is, if that little pocket there was five inches square, I tend to cut um, my uh, pattern paper at an eighth of an inch less. So that's going to be four and seven eighths by four and seven eighths, okay? And you'll see that that is going to fit nicely on my pocket there and give me just a little bit of white around the outside, okay? Well, that's all very well, but I need to make that slant across there. So you do it with your pencil. I'm doing it with my pen so you can see it. Uh, actually, I usually use a knife, but that's by the by. So I can see here that um, I need to make my cut here. 
and then up there so what i'm doing is i'm actually just eyeballing to see um where roughly an eighth of an inch is going to be so i'm making a mark by putting my paper on top i've made a mark there and i've made a mark there looking at it i don't know if you how well you can see this but i've still got about an eighth of an inch there so what i'm going to do is um i've lost my trimmer again what's oh, here i'm going to do exactly the same way as i did with the pocket i'm going to line up those marks that i've just made and if this doesn't work i'm going to look remarkably foolish okay. and i'm going to cut that bit off and now when i come to decorate up that bit it should it should yes miracle just fit on with a little bit of a a gap there because i do like the white okay you might decide you want to um ink the edges of your papers just bear that in mind but as you can see here just by doing that it's just a cheap way of measuring but it works for me i've been able to cut that piece of paper to fit onto my pocket in a really really easy way without lots and lots of measuring and stuff because who's got time for that quite frankly okay all right does that make sense so that's our corner pocket like i said i've got two on mine you could do it all with corner pockets or none of them hello larissa what time is it with you I am very glad that you could join us this evening. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, that's how you do that. Dead quick and easy. I'm all for cheating. I know that sounds rotten, but I am. So, that's how you do the corner pocket. What I'm going to do now is look at the policy envelope. So, I've got those two bits that we did earlier, which were six and a half inches by six inches, and then five and a half inches by whatever that was i can't even remember two and a half inches the envelope flap thing dead easy you're not that far behind us are you if it's if it's three o'clock with you you really i thought you'd be a lot further behind than that what's your weather doing we've had snow this week and terry's got bright sunshine in florida so how's yours so the um the envelope flap sorry i get I get, get very easily distracted oh do you know i have a really boring british accent larissa um it's very ordinary but i'm actually from north of england not far from where uh And my brain's gone dead. Rizwana's from, um, and 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 I I seem to have lost my accent. I've lived down south in the Midlands for too long. We have to change this round. If you teach the next class, Larissa, and then I can hear your accent, and then then it'll be good. Because I'll probably I, I I love Canadian accents. Anyway, right. So there we go. <laughs> not exactly rocket science that is the head of the policy envelope what you can do to make it look really pretty is just round the corners and i know i've got my corner rounder because i saw it about five minutes ago oh so i'm just going to round the corners it's up to you whether you do this or not obviously but it can make it look quite finished oh york's beautiful actually it's the wrong side of the pennines for me i'm a lancashire lass um, but York is absolutely beautiful. Did you go to the Viking Centre? The Jorvik Viking Centre. That's an amazing place. It's on my bucket list. Right, so policy envelope, the bottom bit, which is this bit here. This bit. What we're going to do first of all is we are going to mitre these corners here where the score lines intersect. So we're going to snip up to where the score line intersects, just change the angle of our scissors slightly and just cut off those two corners, okay? Now, just, oh, that's probably me, Terry. It's probably because I was digging something out of my toolbox. Let me know if it keeps happening, though. 
All right, so um, with regard to the policy envelope, I'm just going to do this quickly just to show you that if you choose not to put that acetate front on it, that's it, it's done. Okay, so you're going to glue it into your book. Like that. Okay, that is complete. So you're going to glue... Put some glue on those bits, stick that on there, put some glue on that bit, stick it on there. But what we're going to do now is we're actually going to look at the uh, pocket with um, the acetate bit in it, which is that one. OK. So. Once again, you're going to need a pencil and a ruler. And we're going to work on the back of the pocket. So how wide you do this bit is up to you. Uh, I think I did it an inch here, but I think I'd be inclined to maybe only go three quarters of an inch just to make it a little bit narrower. So we've got a bigger acetate pocket. So what I'm going to do is just for ease from this case, I am going to measure from the score line not the edge of the paper because that means I'm gonna have to do some maths and I'm not much good at that but I'm gonna measure from the score line and I'm gonna measure in three quarters of an inch and I'm gonna make myself a mark and I'm going to do that from both sides from the score line three quarters of an inch And I'm going to draw myself a little line just so I've got a bit of a guide. Once you get used to doing this, you can do it without having to draw these guidelines. I certainly can. Um, but just to start with, it's good to have the lines in. So what I'm going to do now is I'm measuring from the very bottom score line. I'm measuring um, three quarters of an inch from that bottom score line and then I'm going to measure three quarters of an inch from the very very top of the pocket. This is the bit without the score lines because it's the top it doesn't need to have any score lines. Okay and I am going to measure that. So what I've got here is I've got a square for my frame. York Minster's beautiful. The Rose Window, I presume you saw. The Train Museum. Oh, yes, I know all about that. I spent a lot of my childhood in the Train Museum. Consequently, I hate trains. Sarah Lancashire is from my home area and she's wonderful. And, and if I have a beer, I sound like her. Right. OK, so what we need to do is actually cut that out. So um, I'm going to use a craft knife. So at this mm. point, Mark, look away. I'm looking away. Do not watch me. Who had an accident? Somebody had an accident this week and ended up in A&E, didn't they? Uh, yeah. With a craft knife. Who was it? Someone I can't remember who it was, but somebody chopped the top of their finger off. So I hope you're all right now, if you're here. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I am going to use my craft knife to cut that frame out. I haven't done it very straight. Oh, well, never mind. I will stick a flower over it when it's done. He was talking to the other day and I said, there's no such, oh, I know, it was um, it was Gail. There's no such thing as a mistake. It's just an opportunity to embellish. OK. Hazel. It was, ha yes, it was. It was Hazel, yes. I hope she's all right. But she had my every sympathy because I've done it. In fact, actually, I don't know if I should tell you this story, but I did it. And, and being a true scrapbooker, the bit of finger that I cut off, I kept to scrapbook. Is that really weird? I don't think it's weird. OK, so. 
we've now cut out the frame uh, for our policy envelope okay so it's going to be like that so what we want to do now is we want to make sure that anything that we put in this envelope isn't going to fall out so um, we want to put a piece of acetate if you've had the kit from me you should have a piece of acetate in here and I am going to cut that I think at five inches square so uh, here's my acetate and I'm just going to cut that at why does acetate get covered in cat hair it's like a magnet for cat hair okay so there's my piece of acetate I'm sure you can't see this um, and I've cut that at five inches now we're going to work again on the inside of the pocket and you are going to need I use red tape here uh, I, I think you can use glossy accents something like that but my preference here is the red tape and I bet you I haven't got enough to finish this but I am going to just put my red tape right up to the edge of my frame all the way around and I'm going to make sure that I burnish that really really well because it is so important that we get a really good adhesion on this acetate okay so i've just burnished my red tape down um, onto the card and i'm going to peel that back she says hopefully I have one my nails you know you see these um it's usually russian ladies russian crafters who have the most beautiful nails and then there's mine uh, but i always make sure i keep one long one just for removing tape so this awful piece of scraggy acetate that i've got here i am now going to lay down on top of my very badly on top of my red tape and I'm just going to burnish that. Please do this tidier than I have because I've just made a right pig's ear of that. And now we've got the acetate front on our pocket. Okay. Are you guys still there? Because I've, I've lost this picture and it's really bothering me. Just so you know, if anybody heard that, that was Mark's chair. It wasn't anything untoward. He's doing it deliberately now. OK, so a couple of little tips and tricks for you. Before you glue this down into your book, it is easier by far to put this back sheet of patterned paper on. OK, oh, good. You're still there, Terry. That's all right. And this, you can still see this, this, the screen still working as it should, because all I've got is this thing going round and round and round. So I'm hoping it's working. It just, I don't just touch on, it. Just click on the picture. Oh, if it all... Well, where am I now? Shall I just refresh just it? Not... Okay. If I lose you guys, I'm really sorry. It's all Mark's fault. Oh, yeah, there I am. Oh, well, that's better. Right. Let me just get myself sorted yeah okay so i find that it is far far easier to put this bit of pattern paper on first so i can't remember what size it is so i'm just going to measure i think it's uh five and a half i think it was five and a half by seven wasn't it five and a half by seven so what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut a piece of pattern paper that is uh, five and three eighths of an inch 
five and three eighths of an inch by six and seven eighths of an inch. Poor Mark, indeed. I don't think so. No, I don't feel so. Actually, I do feel sorry for you, darling. You do get a rough deal. Thank you. No, no. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is, um, if, if this was, no, that can't be right. What on earth have I cut that like? Six and seven eighths. <sighs> okay. Right. Get your lid your flap, put a little bit of glue on the edge of your flap and glue that down first to the top of your page, okay? I'm hoping that's lined up, I can't see what I'm doing. Okay, so the first thing that we've done there is we've added our envelope top. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add that piece of double of, of, of um, pattern paper on there and mat that. Okay. Three hands. Thank you. Right, I find, I find that's easiest. So now I've got my pocket, which is going to go on top like that. So you can see now why it is actually much, much easier uh, to pop um, that piece of backing paper on before we actually put down the cover of our envelope. If you wanted to add anything across there, this is the time to do it. The reason I say that is because on mine, I've actually put a sticker across there. This, this sticker and this I've added on the top afterwards but that sticker in there that line that was added at this point okay so now I'm going to glue that down I'll just put some wet glue on those flaps And I'm going to stick that down to my page. Now, I'm going to show you how I make the frame to go on top. Hi, Julie. I thought you were working. Have you rushed back from work to join in? Uh, yes, Larissa, you're absolutely right about um, that. However, I would say that that is what is such a lovely thing about Canada is distance. You don't have to actually um, be near other people, do you? Uh, so I will show you how to do the frame of the pattern paper. But what we're also going to talk about is how we put on our magnets, because I have actually um, added magnets to, to this um, as a closure because uh, that's how I wanted to close it. Now, normally the magnets that I use, I've got some here, so I'm going to show you. Oh, and I've put these up on the website, by the way. I've put on the magnets and I have put on, um, um, I'm, I'm having magnet trouble here. I've got my fingers stuck. Hang on. Um. I usually use these uh, magnets, which are uh, one centimetre, so that's 10 millimetres across. Um, but because this is quite a narrow area, we're using the oh, smaller ones, which I think... Oh, no, I think they're less than... Oh, for goodness sake. They're less than that. They're about six. Yep, yeah, six millimetres across. So what I want you to do is I want you to take two magnets... And we're going to attach our first one. Let's just see. That's going to have to go quite high up, I think. I'll attach that, stick that to my thing. Right. Um, so I'm just going to attach 
that magnet just as it is quite high up the pocket yeah that will work wherever I want it to go okay I've just stuck a bit of glue on it what we're going to do now is we're going to make the patterned paper to go over here and then I'm going to show you how I attach the magnet to the flap up here and then we're going to cover that so it all become clear I hope how to attach your magnets so I've got my pocket I put my magnet not at all in the center actually if truth be told just check that still yep and uh, we are going to now cut a piece of patterned paper that is roughly five and a half centimetres square so I will cut that at five and three eighths centimetres inches inches yes thank you Mark just checking you're awake <sighs> yeah not inches not centimetres I don't do centimetres generally that's totally confused me the pocket size is five and a half inches square so I am cutting my patterned paper at five and three eighths of an inch square. Right. And now I'm just going to check that that fits on there for size, which it does more or less. Although I don't seem to have cut that pocket at all square, but never mind near enough. OK. So now I'm going to get my ruler, which I put safe. It's looking after my other magnet. If I lose my other magnet, that's where I've put it. OK. And I'm just going to measure that that should be three quarters of an inch. You're going to love this. So I'm going to work on the back of my paper. Oh, no, I like that bit better. This is going to be the back of my paper now. And I am going to measure... just under three quarters of an inch so it's going to be three quarters of an inch would be here but I'm going to measure just under so that is four five eighths of an inch let me just check this five eighths of an inch yeah so I'm going to measure in five eighths of an inch all the way around this piece of pattern paper I have a horrible feeling this isn't going to be right And like we did with the original pocket, I'm just going to draw my square so that I can see where I'm cutting. I don't think this is straight either. You get the gist of it. I'm sitting, you can tell I'm concentrating because I'm sitting here with my tongue out. You can't see that, but trust me, I am. Right, so I'm going to get my knife back and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that out. So essentially, what I'm trying to say here and explain really badly is that this space here on my frame is three quarters of an inch so to cut leaving a little bit of a, a, a gap around the cardstock because I do like to see that edge of the cardstock I am cutting it at one eighth of an inch less so one eighth of an inch less than three quarters of an inch is five eighths of an inch god I hope that makes sense
Right, this is the time when it all goes horribly, horribly wrong. So I've cut that out. Right, fingers crossed, everybody, please. And in theory, oh God, that should fit. Yes. I knew this would work all the time. That should fit on there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my glue. I'm going to go right to the edge of my pattern paper, especially around the area where the magnet is. I'm going to put a little spot of glue on my magnet as well. And I'm going to put on my pattern paper, line that up and glue it down, covering that magnet up. I'm not doing this very well because I'm having to look at it from a funny angle. But you get the gist of it, I think. And if you've got any gaps or bits don't line up, stick a flower over the top. Okay, so that's how I've covered that bit of the pocket. Okay, but now to make that close, what I need to do is use my magnets. So... Here is my magnet, the other one. I'm just going to pop that down on top of the other magnet and it'll decide which way round it wants to go. It makes it super easy. And I am just going to put um, a little spot of glue, just a tiny spot, just so I can see what I'm doing, onto that magnet. And I am going to shut the lid down there so that when I open up there, you won't be able to see this, but I can. I can see... A mark where that magnet lines up so I'm going to take a little bit of double-sided tape this doesn't have to be red tape I'm only going to use red tape for the convenience because that's what I've got out in front of me and I'm going to close that I'm going to press on my magnet and hopefully when I open that up now my magnet will have transferred to where it needs to be on the flap so now I'm going to cover that piece. I'm going to need five and a half by two inches. So I need to cut a piece that is one and seven eighths of an inch by five and three eighths of an inch. I'm just going to round the corners and if you're using a directional paper just bear in mind which end your uh, which way up it's going when you um, round the corners I'm just going to pop some glue on there little spot of glue on my magnet line that up make sure it's stuck down really well over the magnet and now in theory that should shut and stick with the magnet okay and you can't see where the magnet is all right dead easy if you wanted to make your um, flap a little bit longer, if you don't like to see that bit, I don't mind it. But if you wanted to make it another half inch longer, you can do that. It's entirely up to you how you do it. So now we've got a pocket. It's got an acetate front. So we can just slip our photo mats in there and we can see through what they look like. Okay, dead easy. Not as complicated as it looks, I hope. What do you think? Easy enough? Velcro sticky pads are a jolly good idea, Steph. It takes all the heartache out of it. Okay. Right, the next one that we've got to do is our flippy flappy one, which is that one. But seeing as we've just gone through all the pain of doing this one, which is complicated, we're going to go and do 
the easy ones. So we're going to put the flippy flappy one to one side. We've got four pieces of card for that. And we're going to look at the, um, the large, what I've called the large pocket. So we've got a piece of card which is six and a half by, uh, where's my ruler? Which is six and a half by four inches. We've got the three um, intersecting score lines. And all we're going to do is we're just going to mitre those corners, do it at an angle rather than straight across. I think you get a better fit. We're simply going to, I hate that red stuff, it goes everywhere. Oh, it's my computer now. We're simply going to fold those bits up, burnish them really well. And we've got a pocket it really is that simple so put a bit of glue on your pocket and glue that down at the bottom of your page now when I decorate these up what I do is this bit that goes at the top here I'm just make sure it's in shot this bit that goes at the top here I cut slightly longer than I need so I know that that is going to be, um, that area is going to be five and a half by roughly three and a half inches. So what I'm going to do, instead of cutting it at three and a half inches, I'm actually going to cut that piece at four inches. So I've got an extra half an inch and the reason for this will become clear. And then I'm going to cut that at five and three eighths of an inch. OK, so this piece that I've just cut to go there is slightly bigger than what I actually need. And the reason for that is because I like to just slot in that piece of pattern paper just a little bit down inside the pocket. Because I think it gives a much, much, much better finish than just sticking it, say, to there. And it makes it a lot easier to slot your photo mats in and out. It makes it a lot smoother. OK, so when I'm matting, um, you know, the, the, the page that goes inside a pocket, the bit of page that goes inside a pocket, that's the way I do it. I cut the piece of paper ever so slightly longer than I need. OK, so that's that one done. <laughs> now we're going to move on to the long pocket. So the one that we've just done, the one that we've just put together is this one here. OK, and you can see on this one, I've just slotted in the, the, the card a little bit down there. I think it gives a much more professional sort of finish to it. So that's what we've done there. What we're going to do now is looking at this one. Now, I said to you earlier on that basically most of the book has got two slanted pockets or two policy envelopes. On this book that I've made, there is only one half page pocket and one belly band the reason for this hi gail um the reason for this is because um we have to make allowances for the back of the book and the front of the book the back of the book when you come to decorate it uh not a problem at all gail no need to apologize absolutely fine it's nice that you're here at all um so that bit is just flat I've just decorated it flat. There's nothing on there. You can put stuff on the back if you want to. Um, but just bear in mind that when people are looking at the book, it's entirely possible that it might get knocked about. OK, and then um, we've got the front bit, which I said I'll, I'll have a mention about in a minute because it's a little knack to doing these slot in pockets and a, a little tr trick I want to teach you. That was my ruler on the floor. So what we're going to do now is this long pocket here. And it is exactly the same as that short pocket that we've done which I haven't at all lined up when I glued it. Never mind. We're just going to mitre those corners on the long pocket. Fold up the flaps, burnish them. Thank you. 
I hope everybody else is as messy a crafter as I am. Put some glue on there and then slip it into the side. Now this pocket can go either way. It can go on this side or it can go on this side. It doesn't matter. It will matter on some books that you make. Say, for instance, if we were making a book that had a hard cover with hidden hinge binding, it would matter because it's going to be really uncomfortable to take anything out of the pocket if it's pointing towards the spine. If it points away from the spine, it's a lot easier. So just bear that in mind. OK, so that's the long pocket. That's not at all difficult. And then the last one that we've got to do uh, until we come to do that um, flippy flappy pocket is the belly band. So we've got our piece here that's two inches um, by eight inches with our half inch score lines on either end. This isn't rocket science. All we're going to do is fold that over. Burnish those ends. Bit of glue on both of the flaps. And I just eyeball where the middle of the page is and I stick that down. Now, when I came to decorate this, um, this backing bit here, you can do it in one of two ways. You can either do it as we did the policy envelope and mat the whole of the back of the book before you start. Or I just cut two pieces and slip them in. It's entirely up to you how you want to do it. Both will work. So there we go. That is really knocking me off now. Look, can you see what I've done? I haven't put it on at all straight. So that's, um, that's how we put all of those bits together. So all we've got left now to work on is the flippy flappy pocket and um Steph there's not any chance of you being messier than me because if you could see what's actually around the edge of the film um yeah it's not pretty anyway I digress uh so um we're just going to do that flippy flappy pocket and then I'm going to talk to you about using your pattern paper on the front to make a slip pocket so the last bit that we're going to do is this bit here this flippy flappy pocket all right and there is a knack to it but it's very very easy so we have got our four pieces of card that are left over we've got the longer ones and we've got the shorter ones the shorter ones are dead easy all we're going to do is just fold on that flap there I've chosen to round the corners of mine checking that's the right size um, but it's entirely up to you whether you want to do that now put those to one side because these are actually the bits that we stick on last and that will become apparent so what we've got here are these two larger pieces which are the bits that go side to side on our book and open up like that okay so what we're going to do first of all is we're going to make this slant now it's entirely up to you where you want to put uh, you know how steep of a slant you want and I can't remember what I did in my tutorial but I think it was an inch but I'll just double check that because I don't want to be giving you duff information no three quarters of an inch so I hope you can see this but I have got my piece of card here with the score line at the bottom and I have got it landscape there is a reason for this so what I want you to do is I want you to take your pencil and I want you to take your ruler, which I've lost again. <sighs> Hang on while I find my ruler. Oh, I dropped it, didn't I? Here we go. Yep. OK. And I am going to measure in three quarters of an inch. Top and bottom. So what I've got here is I've got my flap, my whole sort of page flap landscape. This is the score line down here and I am measuring in three quarters of an inch from 
the left hand corner and the right hand corner at the top furthest away from the score line okay so what I want you to do now is get your trimmers oh we do that on both and we line up that mark that we've made with the score line not with the bottom of the page but with the score line and we're going to cut these little triangles off okay so I'll just do that again I'm going to line up that mark that I made with my pencil and the score line not the bottom of the page and I'm going to cut that off so what I've got here is I have got a cut right down to the score line at an angle up to where I made a mark so that there is no cut at all on that bottom half an inch flap does that make sense so here again I've got my my um, my flap I've got the score line at the bottom of it and I am going to measure in three quarters of an inch from the top left and three quarters of an inch from the top right okay so I've made my marks and what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this up on my trimmer from this the mark that I've made with my pencil down to the score line only just down to that score line and I'm going to cut those triangles off so just to the score line okay now I'm going to fold those just folded that really badly Now I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm going to mitre up to the score line. This, it doesn't matter that much, it just helps us put it on the page a little bit easier. Okay, so if I lie that flat, you'll be able to see what sort of shape I've got. So there's my score line. I've mitered the corners up to the score line. And then we've got our long angular cut here so that when we come to glue this down onto the page and I'll show you on my um, on my green uh, mat first so it'll become clearer it's going to line up like that okay is that clear have I have I explained this properly or would anybody like it explaining in a different way is that okay I'm going to assume it is either that or I've lost everybody right so it helps massively to glue these longer bits on first so I'm just going to put some glue on the flap And I'm going to glue that to the left hand side of that page right up to the edge of where the Tyvek is where the Tyvek meets the actual page and make sure that's glued down and I am going to do exactly the same on the right hand side so this is going to go up to the edge where the card page meets the Tyvek and I'm going to glue that down there and just make sure that's stuck really well okay so those are those two bits done now so those two are these two that and that okay now open that up and what we're going to do now is we're going to attach these bits which stop your photo mats falling out one at the top and one at the bottom and these are a quarter of an inch narrower than the width of the page which means they're dead easy to put in and line up but it is far easier to put these in after we've put in the long left and right pieces 
So I've put some glue on my flap and I am going to stick this at the bottom of my page but I am going to make sure it is centred left to right. I don't know how well you can see here but it, is, it isn't as wide as the page. So let me find a piece of paper just to show you. Here, that's the edge of our page there. But this flap, this one at the bottom, is not as wide. So this doesn't meet the score lines. We're going to stick the other one the same, but at the top. Centre it left to right. And I can't see. I'm really sorry. You're going to get the top of my head in a minute. OK. And then those close over the top. And by making it slightly smaller... It means that we don't get bits catching where we don't want them to. I've really put this together badly. It's all moved. Sorry. Because I can't see what I'm doing. Otherwise, you're just going to get the back of my head. Yours will be much tidier because you don't have to worry too much. But as you can see, those bits have gone in. Now, closure. I've done a cut apart. So what I've done is I've cut my cut apart and I have matted it onto white card. I have decorated with pattern paper this um, this flap here, which we'll do in a minute. And I have added this cut apart onto the top. I've only done one side. OK. Where the angles on the flaps, I don't need to cut them on the little ones, just on the big ones. If that makes sense, Larissa. This one, don't want you to decorate that yet. Because um, we're going to put magnets in. Because this closes with a magnet, okay? The magnet goes here. So we're going to put a magnet on there in exactly the same way as we did. Why, why not? I don't know. I just never have. Um, it, the reason we mitre these corners and not these corners is because when we come to put that flap on here, sometimes that bit, if it's not mitred, catches on this flap here so I just miter off that corner there and there underneath that pattern paper just so it doesn't it doesn't catch this is going to be really hard for me to show you it's mitered there I don't know if you can see this it's mitered across there but not across there because this isn't as wide as the page so it doesn't catch if that oh good that does make sense yeah it's just it's just something that I found after you know however long I've been making them I just you know do these weird little things and I don't really think why but yeah that's why it's just to stop it catching okay so with regard to the magnet we're going to put a magnet on here and then cover it and then we can put our magnet on here in exactly the same way as we did previously. So we're going to put place our magnet on top here so that it knows where it wants to go. Put a little spot of glue on, fold it over. We can see where that spot of glue is. That's where we're going to put our double sided tape and add our magnet. Close it again and our magnet will be on the double sided tape exactly the same way as we did it before. And then you can put your pattern paper on top because you're covering over the magnet. OK. But what you want to know now, I guess, is how did I get the pattern paper to fit on there? Well, the way that I did that is exactly the same way as we did uh, the other ones. I measured how big this would be if it was a rectangular piece of paper and it didn't have um, it didn't have uh, any bits cut out of it. So it would be three and a half by 
seven inches okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut this piece of pattern paper to fit and it is going to be three and a half it's going to be three and three eighths of an inch by six and seven eighths of an inch so now I've got my piece of pattern paper which should fit on here and it would be perfect if I didn't have those bits cut out, those slants. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my pen and I'll need to change my glasses so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to just place that, that pattern paper exactly where I'd want it to go and I'm going to make a little mark where I want to cut. And once again, I'm going to get my trimmer. I'm going to line up the mark that I've made with the far corner of that pattern paper. And I'm going to cut it off so that my paper has now got a slant on it. And I'm going to do the same on the other side. OK, so now when I put that piece of pattern paper on there, it should fit exactly so you can see that underneath there I've still got my white card showing all the way around because I kind of like that okay so it's exactly the same way as we did it with the um, corner angled pocket this one over here which I never stuck down actually that one the one that goes on there it's done in exactly the same way okay does that make that kind of clear I've jumped about all over the place this evening I'm so sorry I hope you're all following this so last of all front cover let me just tidy my book up because I've I've made a mess. Nothing new there. Right. Front cover. I decided to make a slotted pocket, which is dead easy because you only use patterned paper. You cut four like that. Um, how do you mean, Terry? You've got... Oh, I see. Yeah, because you've got the insides as well. So yeah, you've got a, you've got a, you're talking about the pattern paper, I presume. If that wasn't upside down. You could do that that way, couldn't you? So yeah, because you're going to be covering the inside, but you just do them all in exactly, exactly the same way. Yeah, absolutely. So you're going to have four, two, two for each side. But if you're going to put two lots of this flippy flappy pocket, Larissa, exactly what you're saying, like the one that is in my book, then that's eight. I'm going to leave that there because I'm getting confused. <laughs> if you need me to do it again, let me know and I'll do another video. So if you get stuck, just shout. It is not a problem at all. OK. So, front of the book, slotted pocket, okay? I've just put some little, little photo mats and a bit of the ephemera in. This couldn't be easier. What I did was I cut a piece of patterned paper, which I've run out of now. Let me find a piece of patterned paper. There's got to be one somewhere. Oh, there is one. I'm going to cut that at the size of the book, which was five and a half by seven. So it's going to be five and three eighths of an inch by six and seven eighths of an inch. And that should give me the cover of my book. Yeah, more or less. Okay. But to make that pocket, 
I'm going to want to cut, um, I haven't glued that down very well, I'm going to want to cut a little slit. So I'm going to turn over my pattern paper and I'm going to measure myself exactly where I want that slit to go. So on this one, for example, I measured up two inches. And I'm doing this on the back because you're never going to see it. I measured it two inches, but rather than all the way across, I measured it from half an inch in on both sides. So here I've got a line that I'm going to cut with my knife that is two inches up from the bottom and it is half an inch in from both sides. So I'm going to get my knife, which miraculously I have not lost yet. And I'm just going to cut one slit across. OK. That's it. It's that simple. But this is about the way that we adhere it to the page. So I'm going to turn this back over and I am going to get some double sided tape. This will become clear in a minute. I'm going to get some double sided tape and I am going to place this double sided tape above that line that I have just cut, not below it, above it. OK, so there's the bit that I've just cut and there's my double sided tape. OK, I'll just take that off now just for a second because it's easier to do it like this. Then I'm going to get my glue now. This bit at the top, I want to cover that in glue or double sided tape or however you choose to adhere your paper to the book. OK, lots of glue. But round this bottom bit, all I'm going to do, and this is really important, is a sliver around the edge. So there is no glue underneath that slit other than at the very, very bottom. OK. Now, I don't strengthen it, Wendy. You can do, um, but I don't. Now, I'm going to just attach this to my page, my front cover. I'm sitting with my tongue out again. I'm concentrating. And what's happened now is that above my pocket is attached entirely to the page, but this bottom bit isn't. It's only attached to the page by a thin slither of glue round the outside, which means that this bit here isn't attached to the page, which is very important because we need it to be a pocket so that we can slip our paper. Uh, photo mats in so we're not going to get confused as to which way round it goes because our double sided tape has adhered that bit and it gives us a really good adhered base so that we can just stick our pocket our photo mats in now if you're not sure if you you know use a piece of paper like me there you know put a decoration across there you know if you wanted to do um i'm just looking at this here uh hold on what you might want to do to strengthen it i guess is You could take a strip of pattern paper and you could pop that there and it, it makes it very clear where your photo mats are going to go as well. OK, and that that will strengthen it. But that is how I do that slotted pocket. It's dead simple. I think it's really effective, uh, but there's just a knack to making sure that that sticks down. OK, so there we go. That is our book completed. Like I said, you can mix and match the pockets any way that you like. You don't have to follow mine at all because all the pages are exactly the same uh, in terms of size. So any of the pockets or page elements will fit anywhere that you like. Um, there are photographs uh, on the page of um, each of the uh, pages 
uh, th there's photographs in the group of each of the pages here the pages are also in the um, tutorial which as you may well know now um, is uh, in the OneDrive link that I've done um, along with the um, the other classes um, tutorials and I, I think it, it probably makes it an awful lot easier for people to find stuff I'm certainly finding it easier to find stuff uh, and then as soon as I've edited um, these videos these will go up here as well so there we go that is our little book complete I hope you enjoyed it I love this little book it's one of my favorites actually um...